Chapter 20, Diesel Engine Repairs. 218, the repairs ordinarily made on the diesel engine of the locomotive are those repairs required to keep the equipment of the operating equipment uh, a condition without a necessary major overhaul, whether the nature of required repair necessity is considerable to assemble of the engine almost by all parts made accessible for such diesel should be inspected or repaired or replaced. The burden of preventive maintenance is placed in the using of the organization direct to the support of the maintenance is performed in the maintenance activities in direct support of the using op organizations. And consistent with the primary repair of the replacements on service parts and sub-assemblies and assemblies. The best detailed procedure is to follow in any particular make of the diesel electric locomotive is governed by the applicable manual or the manufacturer's instructions. A stack of complete repair units and diesel engine equipment is maintained at the depot maintenance repair shop to replace the similar units removed from the engine for the repairs and reconditioning the interchangeable units of reassembly of an engine repair or sorry, engine and prevents a delay caused by the waiting of the repairs to be completed with the individual parts allowed for the different classes of repairs to segregate and handle by special groups of the shop. Um, quantity production methods can be therefore employed in depot energy engine repairs. 219 General Repair Procedures. The given type of the repair may be handled at all once at extended intervals or progressive during such intervals depending on the amount of time available for repair. The tactical situation, for example, is part of the need of the repair and can be replaced as a unit without deactivating um, the equipment. This war should be followed and if more extensive repairs should be required, the procedures outlined in the depot maintenance instructions should be followed. 220. Running mm, test, uh, test of repaired engines. Each repaired diesel engine should be run in adequately forced before it released for service time, fuel, labor spent, breaking in. The um, engine will result in greater longevity and efficiency of the unit. A check is made in the compression chamber at each cylinder, each exhaust gas, and the temperature of each uh, cylinder at various temp engine speeds, lubrication, oil temperatures, cooling, water temperature, supercharger, blower pressure, and horsepower output v under varying conditions over the current and voltage as indicated by the main generator characteristics. Um, curve. The individual throttle position, speed, and loading, color, quality, exhaust gases, general sound, action, and the engine under loaded the acceleration, other indications of the proper and proper operation. A liquid rheostat or a water box is a convenient testing device. It consists of two sets of plant plates within the tank and it's in a tank. One set in the beginning of the stationary, the others arranged to lifted out of the tank gradually. The tank is filled with water by connecting diesel electric generators to the rheostat or current may be passed from one set of plates to the other. The amount of the current depends on what uh, what the portion of the moving moved movable plates is emerged, thus verifying the load impulse upon the engine. Other facilities for the work include a cylinder pressure indicator to either maximum instant, instant pressures for the curved drawing type of the pyrometer, thermocouples, new volt voltmeter, and meter with a shunt and usually complemental with the pressure gauges and thermometers and temperature ga indicators which are part of the regular, regular engine equipment. 221 load testing of diesel motive power. In addition with the running of the test of the repaired engines, periodically inspection necessary to keep the engine in condition to produce its rated power by the measuring the electrical output delivered to the water box. The engine loading and the capabilities may be determined accurately. The electrical characteristics of the generator and the motors do not change it with age or use. The following precautions procedures are low complied, complied with the load testing. Locomotive power plants, since the generator characteristics load, load, load setting values are not the same for all locomotives, you see a separate generator loading of the curve sheet is used by the, each of the group of the locomotives, which has a generator of the similar characteristics to determine whatever the load value should be for the locomotive. Refer to the loading curve of the sheet corresponding to the type of the model power plant being tested. There are so many different wiring combinations of locomotives now in service that the would not be practical to prefer the locomotive. Use the proper locomotive wire diagram to determine the necessary physical connection to the meter's liable load capable Connection, safety, personalized, personal equipment, it cannot be overemphasized. After ammeters, voltmeters are properly connected of directed individual testing instruction reading are taken at each set pro throttle position for engine speed field, amateur main generator, amateur main generator voltage, auxiliary generator volts, pertinent per readings of the temperature, pressure gauges of oil and water systems and related data. 222 piston and connection rod interval and in inspection piston and connection rod assembly should be removed in diesel engine for inspection and repairs as follows. Cast aluminum pistons normally at 75,000 miles. Forged aluminum pistons normally at 85,000 miles. Pistons are connected with the rods assemblies with the diesel engine using switch locomotives should be removed for inspection and repairs in accordance with special instructions covering each particular
type of diesel engine. Whether and whenever any defe defective condition is reported, maintenance of position. Whenever the maintenance connection of a rod assembly is removed from the cylinder of the repair, the first second compression ring should be replaced with the new ones. Pistons should be cleaned and inspected thoroughly for the defects such as cracks, bodies, position, broken legs, wings, landings, worn grooves, carbon and ring grooves. Burn piston head, scored piston skirts, and any other defective condition. Piston pins and pis piston pin and piston pin bearings should be removed, examined for for, for weak cracks, shipped conditions, hard surfaces, any defective fate found should be corrected. Wear plate, sh which should be fixed over and of the piston of the piston, must be o be oil pressure tight. Before pulling a piston, remove any of the ridge of the liner from the special reamer. When a reamer is used, the caution must be taken to prevent any chips from falling into the crankcase of the engine. Chips can be caught in a certain cup of the cylinder, such as one, one, mad, one made from a brake cylinder piston leather. The crankcase should be inspected after the piston is removed and any of the chips cleaned out. All cylinders and pistons must be measured to ensure the proper size of piston rings and, and are being installed. For the reason this is best to measure the gauge and rings while holding them vertically, sorry, horizontally in the place and linear instead of the using ring gauges at the bench. Connecting rods. Oil passages through the connecting rods should be checked to make certain that they are all, they are open. Connecting rods should be cleaned and inspected for the cracks. Any rods that are cracked have been twisted that have an eye or rod worn so that the worn so that the bearings are loose or fit should be replaced. Connecting rod stud bolts and nuts should be examined for the defects. Replace stud bolts and the nulls nuts which defective threads and replace the nut, nuts and birds spurt slots in the position seizure experience, experience Prior to the removal of connection rods, stud bolts and removal of the cotter pin, sh check the tightness of the nuts to certain whether or not bottles have been stretched. If the nuts have loose, new studs and bolts should be applied. Piston seizures may cause the stressing of the bolts and the studs beyond the elastic limits, in which case the bolts and studs are not safe in further operation. Connecting rod bearings. The upper lower and half of the connection rod bearings shall be given a special attention if there were any indication of the pit and shelling or fit lacking or scoring or excessive wear that should have any other defect, the bearing should be replaced. And the removing of bearing shell harming, ha hammering or forcing should be avoided. The bearing ma face must be moved and moved must not be scratched or should or the shell is dist distorted. Never strike or pry op op on the on the back of the shell of the contour may be dis distorted. A notification of the mark on the shell should be noted that so that they can be replaced and correct a particular intention be given to lining up the oil holes. A periodic inspection of the connection of the rod bearings can be made without moving moving the piston or and the connecting rod assembly. This is done blocking the piston in the top of the position, removing the lower half of the piston rod bearing and backing the sh shaft uh, away from the shell. When connecting the rod assemblies removed from the face of the fillets to the crankshaft journals have been inspected, the scored co condition the crankshaft journal is found in the score of the bearings the area smooth of, of all irregularity irregularities. By stoning with a fi fine grit stone, do not stone lengthwise or use a file. Check it and see that the crank is, if is not out of the round, that it clean all the parts carefully. Connecting the rod, bear rod bearings whenever removed should be examined for any defective conditions such as a distorted shell, cracked, scored shell bearing, metal, uneven wear. Uneven wear is usually an indication of misaligned bearings and the cause and should determine and correct that the bearing surface should be free of any dirt in the grits of the two bearings the halves must fit securely and tightly together in order to prevent working on the rod, uh, in the rod or the oil leakage through the joints. Bent and damaged bearing shells should be scraped. If new bearings are new bearings are to be installed, make certain that the oil holes and grooves are properly located in the respect of the oil feed hole in the connection rod and the oil feed of the hole in the crankshaft. shaft. When the connecting rod bearings are in place, they should have proper clearance of the crankshaft journal. Their clearance should be is one one thousandths per inch of a crankshaft diameter, unless otherwise specified. Their throw sh throw the thrust must be parallel with the respect of the crankshaft check adjoining bearing and be ma be free f be free to move laterally for the with the crankshaft in an angular position. Connecting the red belt should be tightened to the required torque specified by manufacturer to prompt prop the bolt in an elegation or stretch. 
A bearing fitted in the above man manner should be given in no pro no appreciable breaking in, in trouble. But in all cases, after assembly, an advisable making of running the test before the relapse of the service ideal the engine for five minutes and then stop and examine the bearings for increase of the, in the temperature. Fearing the feel the bearing shell directly, there should be no, no appreciable heat in the bearing shells after the five minutes of the running. But if there is, the bearing should be removed and the highest possible relief from the repeat the test when inspection shows the bearing to be free of the excessive heat the engine should be placed with the service under the load under full load 223 crankshaft and the bearings Perform performance of the crankshaft depends upon the prime, proper, proper maintenance of the main and connection rod run under the normal conditions bearing receives ample lubrication means of force lubrication system built into the engine proper alignment normally assured by rigid engine frame method of mounting bearings however the misalignment may occur if one or more bearings are permitted to wear un unduly Alignment is important that the main crankshaft bearing is maintained in the perfect alignment. If one or more of the bearings becomes low or the span between the bearings actually in supporting the shaft will be increased, this will introduce heavy stress in the crank pins. This is the condition permitted to continue if it will if it, it will result in main crankshaft bearing failure. There are several ways of checking the bearings. One method of following is locate the crank pin under the dead center and force the shaft down to a firm seat in the bearings. Re remove the fail valve levers and connect the air hose to a T at the indicator. Cock connection. Provide a pressure gauge of the cylinder head, of the, uh, head, head side at the T. Lock the flywheel and the turning. Maintain the air pressure on the cylinder at 125 pounds or more, regulating the valves located on the inside of the T. Measure the distance between the gauge points on the crankshaft and the micrometer and the strain gauge. Locate the track pin, crack, crank pin and lower dead center and again force the shaft into the bearings above. Measure the distance between the same gauge and measure. Uh, same gauge points. Measure the distance between the gauge the, the points of the two op opposite horizontal position, pistons. Do not use pressure in the cylinders. When bearings are in line, all measures will be the same. If me the measuring test is one, one test is one is larger test than test two. Bearing on the one side of the crank is low. Apply the same inspection method and adjacent cylinders. Comparison of the measure will indicate which bearings are core out of line and alignment should be corrected. When assembling, assign, assembling the main bearings, whenever the parts removal condition permits, examine all grooves and oil holes in connections through the frame and the crankshaft in order to make sure that these patches are clean and free of obstruction. C. Removal and inspection. In most diesel engines, the top of the bearing shall be in removable. Top of the bearing shall be removable with the top calf and lower shell in the rod it rolled out and in or into position by crankshaft. Unless bearings are out opposite end of the engine, they should be removed one at a time in order that, that the crankshaft may be held in position. The shell may maybe should be rolled out of, out and into position with the same direction rotation of the crankshaft, marking the bearings when removed in order that they will be no mistake as the original position. Two of the face and fillets of the crankshaft bearing journal should always be inspected for the scored condition when the bearing is removed. If any of the shaft journals in the bearing areas are scored and all irregularities should be smoothed and out and stoning with a fine grain stone along with peripheral or journal do not stone lengthwise or use file. All, all parts should be cleaned carefully. Main crankshaft bearing failures are often caused by crankshafts, misalignment, flexing. This turn can be traced to be a low misaligned bearing result from loose, distorted bearing support or cracked engine frame. A bearing support should be tight and perfect alignment before a shell is installed. If an inspection shows that the bearing support strap has been closed or in and out of the line, then it should be removed with a correction and replacement. The engine frame should be inspected carefully for the cracks and support straps to for the fractures of looseness. In the frame, the support stud is fractured. If the remaining ones of the bearing should be removed, the remo replaced with the new studs. The stud removed should be given a, a magnetic test to determine their exact condition. Before installing a stud, make sure a certain threads are both ends and are in good condition. Whatever, whenever a bearing is removed, it should be inspected carefully for any defective conditions such as distorted shell, cracked, scored, shell, shelled bearing surface for uneven wear, uneven wear normally it is indicated with the misaligning of the cause must be determined and corrected. Position of the excessive wear will indicate whether it is out of line vertical due to low bearing or horizontal due to loose, closed bearing support strap or bent or damaged bearing shells should be scraped. Bearings 
show show excessive wear, whether the result of the natural wear or the condition of the abnormal con, abnormal condition, should be checked, renewed, and if wear has been reached, where the, where the check, check, checking of the wear of the on the bearings, the shell thickness should be measured with the micrometer at both end, both sides, and at the bottom at the other points of the showing wear. Limits are established also thrust bearings and they should be checked so accordingly if any numberless complete set bearing is renewed the shells applied must be scraped with a 1,000th of an inch same thickness of adjusting bearings and of the old shell provided with an old shell provide that the old shell was removed because of the failure before attempting to roll a shell into place and remove any of the sharp edges of the shell back in, with a fine mail file. Application. After a new shell is sized in properly, it should be rolled into the place freely. If difficulty is experienced, the shell should not be applied until this cause is determined to correct it. When installation of complete main bearings, the shell should be rolled out of the one end of the engine and a new one uninstalled, after which the shell is at the opposite end of the engine should be removed and replaced with a new one. New shell. In this manner, the crankshaft is kept in place. Intermediate bearings are being changed. Less force is thrust necessary to rolling in the shell. When the intermediate bearings is rolled into place, there should be proper clearance on either side of the journal with no clearance between the support and the shell back. The upper shell shall extend out of the cap about two thousandths to three thousandths of an inch, allowing for them the allowing the jaw within the cap bearings that are applied. With the cap tightened into place, it should be possible to get a one thousand inch or a two thousand inch feel or um between the cap and the lower support. This prevents the bottom of the shell from working the support. The jacks of the cap bolt should be, be tight and excessive pressure avoided from as this may distort the cap and the shell. Connecting the rod should be tightened and required more to, by the torque specified by the manufacturer to proper elongation and stretch. With all the shells in place, the cap tightens of the shaft should be rotated to the hand to make sure that it is free. The engine then is reassembled after it is idled under the, its own load for a few minutes in order to locate any indication of localized friction. The engine is stopped and the shell be removed at the time and scraped if necessary. If the operation is continued until all shells should be good bearing, but see certain that each shell is carrying the share of the load. After the bearing are fitted properly, subject it to the same tests used in connection with the rod bearings, paragraph 222 CS. In addition to after the bearing is refitted, but given the proper idling test, further tests of a, zero, of a 5 and a 10 and 15 minutes duration should be put, made. Applications of electronic load should be against the engine should be made. If the diesel engine is used on the switching locomotive, additional testing should be made and consisting with lighting switching duty for the first eight hours, followed by an inspection of the hearings at the end of hearing, bear, uh, inspection of the bearings at the end of the period. 224. The timing unit injectors. After installation of the injectors, they may also be checked and readjusted before the engine is run, since the compression and ignition of the each cylinder is governed by the injection of the fuel to the combustion chamber. To ensure the proper timing of the injunction, injun injection, the plunger for each of the each of the injector has to be adjusted to certain positions in the relationship to the injector body. An injector may be timed as follows. Set the throttle in off position. Jack the engine over the head over by hand and by the air to the direction of the rotation until the exhaust valves of the cylinder to be timed or fully open. Place the injector timing gauge and the timing gauge hose on the top of the face of the injector body. Rotate the timing gauge to determine the lowest surface of the head that will be just past the overall upper surface of the plunger follower god. Alright. Adjust the injector rod, rock arm and means the screw adjustment up at the end of the push rod until the lowest surface of the timing gauge head is just passing over the top face of the plunger follower guide. Tighten this lock nut and other rocker arm shell net shaft nut and recheck the timing gauge. The amount of fuel injected in each combustion chamber is governed by the control rack position of the fuel injector. The maximum amount of fuel injected with the rack is always the in, in is always the way in. Always the way in. No fuel in the, is injected when, when the rack is always uh, all the way out. Bearing in the middle of the fuel injector rack must be compl compl completely for the maximum fuel injection object. Obviously, each rack should be initially adjusted a as near as the possible to be posted. Position each individual rack may be adjusted in or out of relatively to other racks by two adjusting screws on the rack operating levers. 
225, the fuel pump timing adjustment. When each of the cylinders in an individual pump, the individual is timed. All fuel pump timing adjustments are made as a factory for initial assembly under normal operational conditions. It is seldom the change necessary to make any of the change in fuel and pump adjustments, shakes and changes, and individual fuel pump timing adjustments shall be not be made until proper inspection has been made until and it is determined definitely that the injector and such parts as the fuel part um, discharge valve the discharge valve spring of the plunger are good working order the fuel flow conditions are normal unsatisfactory operation conditions or individual cylinders are usually traceable to the defects and of above parts when these part these are corrected operation conditions return to normal. The engine of should be operated no load until the warm up to normal running condition compression and pressure Maximum cylinder pressure exhaust temperature for all, cylinder, all cylinders should be substantially the same under the conditions of constant load speed, fixed time, constant water jacking temperatures, and, and these conditions are the same for all the cylinders. But exhaust gas temperatures at the low, low vent, vent more is 50, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The injector nozzles should be inspected carefully, reconditioned as required. After established, these injector nozzles are properly operating condition. The conditions of performance of the fuel pump discharge of the spring assembly should be checked. The valve must be functionally easily and seated tightly. <coughs> if above if above procedures ha has not indicated the cause of the trouble, the fuel pump timing adjustment should be checked. If the adjusting is correct, the distance between the horizontal monitor on the sleeve and the horizontal monitor on the window of the port of the body pump body will same thought for all pumps. When each plunger is at the bottom of the stroke, each engine is buried slow over the direction of the rotation of the mark of the moving sleeve and all the pumps, and it all should be visible through the window port, port the pump body for all position of the total plunger stroke. Travel. If the fuel pump timing adjustment is not correct, the correction should be made. Adjusting the thickness of the shims, variation shim thickness raises and lowers of the position of the pump suction forever. The, for for the individual pump, this alters the starting time relationship of the pump as compared to the other pumps. If the above pump procedure, if the above procedures has not corrected the trouble, the plunger and the barrel of the complete pump assembly should be replaced. To do this, the engine should be barreled over slowly until the marks on the sleeve of the pump on um, which works is to be done it aligns exactly with the mark on the window port in the pump body. Make replacements without changing the position of the pump camshaft after new parts are installed. The part mark on the sleeve and should be aligned exactly with the mark on the window port in the pump body. If they do not so align, adjust the thickness of the shim reset. The cam fouling adjustment is so that an alignment is obtained. The engine is turned over to the two revolutions and final checking is setting. After which the engine again is buried over the slowly so the mark on the moving sleeve for all positions of the plunger travel is visible through the window port of the pump body. It is individual pump timings are correct and equalization of the loaded distribution between the cylinders may be made by altering settings of the pump rack adjustment screws. 226. Maintenance of Bo Bosch injection nozzles. Check the nozzle. Serious engines failures can be caused by fuel injection, fuel leaking into the crankcase. Cause Caution must be used to tighten it, tighten the fuel following nozzle parts, inspecting, checking, the, and for fuel leakage. If the nozzle holding the nut is tight, if it will leak large amounts of fuel into the combustion chamber, the raw fuel will flow down and pass the position into the crankcase lubricating oil. The spring guide must be hold the nut, lock nut must be tight. If there is not, the fuel will seep out, of, out onto the cylinder head and drain the back into the crankcase. The fuel leak off in the stud must be tightened off and all, also holding the nut, holding also nut holdings the injection inspect, injection overflows pipes to the hold these two sets of nuts should be not jammed against the nipples before the tightening of their respective pipes if they if so they they must the nuts must be grounded off when installation of fuel pipes to the pipe Fuel pipes, the pipe should be sprung to catch the nuts. If the fuel pipe does not line up with the connections, the must be bent slightly. However, the pipes should not be bent enough to weaken them. The fuel pipes must be securely clamped to prevent any vibration chaffing. Nozzles and switching locomotives should be tested and checked once each year. Smoky, exhausting, and smoky, smoky exhaust and engine pounding will occur if nozzle valve sticks into the nozzle. The defective nozzle can be located in a count cutting out the cylinder in rotation. It should be changed as soon as it is isolated. 
The opening pressure is injection may be checked by a nozzle testing device, which is also util utilizes a spare pump to develop an injection pressure as follows. Attach spare pump securely to the injection tube of the test rack. Set the fuel pump bracket at 20 28 millimeters. Travel. Test the nozzle, pumping the lever steadily until the f fuel discharge is noted. The pressure indicated on the gauge, the maximum pressure noted on the gauge at each stroke is opening the pressure on the nozzle. Do not operate the lever quickly as it will cause extremely high pressure to build up and give in an unreliable gauge reading. Checking the pressure. Checking the pressure against the manufacturer pressure specification. Read adjustable nozzle necessary. The adjustment is made by turning the pressure adjusting screw on the top of the nozzle holder. The screw should be turned turned slightly in the necessary in the, in, in the direction. New setting tested. Proceeding in this manner until its correcting setting is reached. After the nozzle assembly is set and the proper opening pressure set up the fuel pump racket at the, at the limit of its travel and approximately 50 millimeters operating the test rig to see if the nozzle operator is properly. Also check to see if there is any after dribble. If any of the thoughts are detected, inspect the nozzle and or remedy to the de detection defect. 227 fuel pump calibration. The fuel injector nozzle spray pattern should be checked and the cleaning of any type of the fuel injector determined that the spray outlets have been properly cleaned and the spray angles are correct and uniform. The calibration standing enables maintenance and to take as efficiency and adjust the calibration of use and overhaul the fuel injection pumps with greater accuracy. Reversible constant speed electrical motors used to operate the equipment the cam in this tested and this test stands has two distinct profiles. When they operate in the forward direction, its actual profile is the same as the cam on the production rate engine. And the direction provides the fuel injection characteristic of fuel fuel full fuel condition to the maximum RPM. When the cam motion is reversed, the actuating profi profile will normally was used in the deceleration on the production engine have been altered so that the cam will give the fuel pump size set fuel pump in the same injection characteristics as the idle speed to connect the flow of of the fuel under the pressure for the injection pump under the standard injection tube is together with a special calibration nozzle holder. After the oil is discharged from the nozzle and discharge chambers, it flows from the tube from which the can be directed either into the graduate breaker and the return in the storage tank and by means of three way valve. To measure flow of the fuel flow of the fuel is necessary to know that the number of the pump the stack structure uh, structure as well can want quantity of for fuel in position desired as direct revolution. This is an injection nozzle um, testing device. Shows the pressure gauge of fuel oil reserve, the fuel oil filter pressure adjustment nozzle fitting fuel pump, pump handle, and an alternate pump. This is a uh, fuel pump calibration level. Motor control panel, three way valve control assembly, go pumps, control sleeve assembly, D pumps, uh, pressure gauge, and I. Acc accumulation, uh, calibration nozzle, storage in the tank, fuel gauge, graduated breakers, filter, fuel, oil pump, tank drain valve, control system, toolbox counter, pressure reg regulating valve, pressure gauge base or valve no nozzle reserve. Counter is provided the measurement numbers of strokes of either forward or the reverse direction to indicate the position of the fuel rack adjusting the screw of the ball socket on the end of the end of the correct alignment is provided to mount it in the sleeve which is notched in such a manner that its fixed position of the rack of the namely idle, full, or off are maintained in the proper relationship. After any of the positions are adjusted, the adjusting screw of the screw is locked on the sleeve and the sleeve of the screw then mo move as a unit known as the control sleeve unit. The other parts of the equipment function is to provide their proper suit super filtering, returning the fuel oil, and enable the continuous operation. The entire assembly is self-contained in the supported and specifically constructed table approximately three feet high, three feet long. The top of the stand has a welding pan to catch excessive leakage while the lower ha sw sw shelf serves as a support for the motor. A reversible pump draws the pump for the storage tank through a filtered monitor on the stand. The filtered fuel is delivered to the injection pump through, the, through a physical hose or flexible hose, relatively cons constant fuel pressure begins to maintain in the pressure relief valve. Fuel based on the relief valve is returned to the fuel storage tank as a special calibrated pump and nozzle is available. Checking the operation of the new ca calibration standing the pumping and the nozzle should be carried if the master gauge used in a doubtable and correctable 
and doubt, if doubtful, when doubtful and correct calibration figures, apply caps and dust proof bags to open connections on both pumps and nozzles. Cleanliness, cleanliness cannot be overemphasized. A suggested calibration procedure. Remove the fill plug on the cam housing. Check the quantity of the lubrication oil supply that sh should be such as the oil will run from this hole. The same grade from the oil, lubricating oil is used in the diesel engine. Check the quantity of the calibration of the oil storage tank. Maintaining the level above the level low level markage indicated on the tank level, tank level gauge. Use only clean oil in accordance with specifications. Make sure the graduate breaker's level is under the discharge pipe. Rotate the cam under the cam roller as riding in the base circle of the cam. Turn adjusting screw under the top of the screw is a specified distance below the top of the mo pump mounting surface and secure the mount lock nut. Place the fuel pump into the tested on the cam housing. Place the fuel rack between the compression spring and adjusting the screw. Tighten down. When, pump, pump, when the pumping time window exposes, the rotate the camshaft by the hand to ensure that the timing market does not go out of the sight and exposed area. After removing the caps and dustproof bags, connect the flexible hoses and the high pressure tubing of the pump from the pump nozzle. Set the control sleeve until the f all the fuel is f until all at the fuel f full fuel position. Set injection pump by adjusting the screw in the control sleeve on unit in lack of the wing nut. Move the control sleeve into the idle position fuel point pointer. Should be 11 millimeters. Move the three-way valve and so full fuel will fl fl flow into the fuel storage tank. Vertical position. 12. Open the valve for the fuel injection pump. 13. Place the control sleeve into the off position starting electric motor forward button. 14. Check the leaks. 15. Move the control sleeve into the full of fuel position. 16. Operate test stands several minutes and ensure steady flow of the oil from the nozzle chamber into the fuel tank. It is important that the temperature of the calibrating oil reaches 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit as indicated by the thermometer in the fuel storage tank before any of the tests are performed. 17. Place a graduated beaker in position, note the count of the note the count on the counter, or pull three-way valve handle with the snap toward the operator horizontal position, so that the flow starts in with the break beaker. After thirty, after uh, three hundred strokes elapsed, the determine with the counter and push the three-way valve handle into the extreme back position, so so that to interpret the flow to the breaker. This may take several attempts before this operation can perform this operation with accuracy. Accurately read and record the f fuel in the breaker. Stop the motor and place the control sleeve into the unit idle position. When the motor has stopped turning, start the position in the reverse direction, reverse button, repeat the idle, repeat the item 17, 18, and 19. It is important to run the fuel. Run idle fuel test immediately after the fuel fuel full fuel test is a great variation of calibration of oil temperature it will affect the test results. If the pump fails to come in with a specified calibration limit to the motor should be stopped. The control sleeve and units moved into the full fuel position. The motor started again in the forward mount mount motion. The adjusting screw is turned either in or out, obtaining more than less fuel making at a test run with a wing nut tight wing nut tight wing nut tight until the required amount of the oil measured of the graduated breaker is in the within the limits. When the limits are reached, the fuel point, pump pointer must be shimmed at 24 millimeters. Rerun the idle position. Check the idling system limits. Sometimes it may be necessary to shim the pointer at the fuel filter position, either on the high or low side, in order to bring the idle position within the idling limits. Move the control sleeve un until the position is off. Um, Pull the three-way valve in the horizontal position. No fuel should be flowed into the position with the standard operation. This is an assurance test to make sure that the pump will not disturb, deliver oil when in the off position. If the calibrations or, or limits are not obtained, it's necessary to dismantle the pump and renew the delivery valve assembly, the plunge, pl plunger in the barrel, or possibly the pump rack or and its bushings. If these items or any combination provide the need of the correction, the correction may be determined by observation by exper experiment with the items noted above in the ordered name. After the work has been done, the pump must be rec recalibrated. After the pump has been calibrated, the shims have been changed and the pointer of the place of the pump calibration rack is correct with the change of the rack length at the apply the gauge pin of the pump rack clevers.
If the reading at the pointer is improper, adjusting the bracket of the length and first unlocking, removing the rack sleeve at the clevis ends of the loosen and lock nut turning adjusting unit reading is indicated by the pointer. Reapply the sleeves and relock. Do not change the shims of the pointer to obtain this setting. On the machine surface pump, the rack position opposite the clevis end is the total thickness of the shim used in the back of the pointer, deleting in the remaining figures for the example of stamping zero. Um, 92 thousandths will indicate the thickness of the shim beneath the pointer of the 92 thousandths of an inch. When in, when the calibration stand is not in use, the faster fastened cover to the oil start storage tank securely in place, protecting exposed ex ends of the flex um, flexible hoses and high pressure tubing by caps of dust proof bags of empty graduated bake break breakers and hang on the rack into the inverted position to drain. Close the glove valve and three way valve. Cover the entire stand with a canvas and hood to protect it from dust and dirt. 228 Lubricating Oil Pump Drive Lubricating oil pump drive term transmit rotary motion from the crankshaft into the lubrication oil pump. The rotation mo motor it motion is transmitted into the pump in the following manner. The head of the drive pan, pan will serve as the crank is piston between the two hardened seals that, which are fitted within a pair of lugs on the face of the crankshaft bearing ring. The crankshaft revolves on the head of the driven pin carried into the causing the horizontal shaft of the drive assembly to rotate the drive gear which is meshed in the gear with the gear on the vertical shaft causing the shaft to turn a spline coupling connects to the vertical shaft of the pump of the driving shift shaft mounting the assembly when driving the pump assembly are complete with ready for the mounting on each end of the cover cover end of the cover the main base of the gaskets are fitted with the mounting flat flange of the drive assembly to the distance piece of the located between the pump suction flange and the end of the cover the distance piece is grounded to the suit of the insulation must not be interchanged while those other units when mounting completed assembly to the end of the cover the mechanism should be tested freedom of for, for, for freedom of the as the bolts are tightened this can be in Insert, insert, and be done in certain hand through, through in certain the hand that through the inspection ports provided with the driving ca, ca, casing. Lubricating oil supply. Lubricating oil supply is supply, supplied to the driving assembly by the tube leading of the main lubrication oil header of the engine. In the head, this tube is connected with the passage of the casting with the over. Oh, which communicates over the circumference groove of the machine or oh, outer diameter of the upper section and vertical shafting bushing from the groove of the drill passage and the bushing and the shafting the case the casings conducting the oil to the bearing of the surfaces. Inspection and reassembly. All parts of the oil pump drive assembly may be inspected with the various clearance and checked for the openings provided in the case of the drive must be disassembled for any of the reasons for the following part. The following will serve as a guide for in re re reassemble for the parts. Um, fit the vertical gear to the gear of the shaft bushing in the diametrical um, clearance of three thousandths of an inch and in play of eight thousandths of an inch. The later cl clearance is obtained by the scraping of the end of the face of the bushing. The case of the Harding collar, the case of the Harding collar, is though is then to be fitted within the shaft dow dowels secured and placed by locking a washer and lock nut. Install the gear shafting and bearing assembly with the casing and the screw secure it place in the means of the locking screw. Install the horizontal drive shaft and the end bushing. Scrape the horizontal drive of the shaft and bearing until the zero three thousand inch feeler can be inserted between the bearing and the shaft. Fit the drive key and the driver gear key in the keyway provided with the horizontal plate shaft. Place the drive gear into the bearing and press the horizontal shaft in the gear until the later end is hardened up against the boss. Check the thrust for a horizontal shaft, which should be a minimum of fifteen thousandths of an inch. The fit the bearing fittings of the tool, the fitting bearing tooth flange tooth housing secured it with both provided. Check the backlash of the gears, which should be about one sixteen or sorry, six ten thousandths of an inch, six thousandths of an inch. Remove the bearing driving shaft as means for the housing by means of the lock washer lock nut provided for this purpose. Secure the gear and place in the drive in the shaft. Install the drive pin, pin in this tapper dowel fitting in the end of the drive shaft and secure it by means of the, of the drive pin nut. Reinstall the completed drive shaft bearing assembly in the casing and secure the means of the bolts and provide them lock the nuts and wiring to them together with a soft iron wire. Check the assembly of the shaft for freedom. Slip the in, slip the spine spline coupling of the vertical shaft pin it into place with a cutter key, and then when pump covers the gasket in place, bolt the bump and pump into the drive casing and check the shaft of the freedom with the large drive casing of the flange and the gasket in the place and the position of the spacer between the pump and the cover mount assembly. 
Check the shafts for freedom in the mounting flange bolts are taken up. Install the lubricating oil lines and inspect support covers and complete the assembly. Chapter 21 Other Mechanical Repairs